नमस्कार डियर लर्नर्स वेलकम टू द लेसन कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन हिस्टरी एंड एवोल्यूशन द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ दिस लेसन आर टू ट्राई टू ट्रेस द ओरिजिन एंड एवोल्यूशन ऑफ द कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन ड्यूरिंग एंशियंट टाइम्स इट इज आल्सो इंटेंडेड टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ कंज्यूमरिज्म फ्रॉम एन इकोनॉमिक परस्पेक्टिव एंड टू ट्रेस the recognition of the rights of the consumers during ancient and also modern times first let us examine the position before the industrial revolution prior to industrial revolution that is in the 19th century the needs of the human beings were very few and these were met through exchange of goods there was barter system that is exchange of possession of one goods with the others catering to their mutual requirements there was no competition as the concept of market was not in vogue at all the wants of people were not many however the industrial revolution has ushered in radical changes in the lives of the human beings as regards the goods and articles consumed by them in their day to day life the consumer goods flooded the market and the traders started adopting various devices to sell the goods manufactured by them the concept of market was also brought into existence as more and more inventions took place more and more goods and articles were manufactured and the human beings started relying upon them more often the encounters between the buyer and the seller increased and the law of demand and supply came into operation as the society was less a fairy the state used to intervene in the lives of its citizens very rarely there were no effective laws to regulate the relationship between the buyer and seller this emboldened the traders to monopolize the markets and the trader became the king there were no measures to check dereliction on the part of the traders unless the same amounted to serious offenses the principles of caveat emptor that is let the buyer beware was the rule of the day the conditions and warranties fixed by the manufacturer and trader were binding on the consumers the consumers came to be abused and exploited by unscrupulous traders whose only object was to make profits at every cost the doctrine of freedom of contract made the traders even bolder in their pursuit of making more profits all these factors culminated in a new phenomenon resulting in the abuse and exploitation of consumers this led to the consumer movement throughout the world the developed countries like the united states of america and united kingdom were the first to realize the need to protect the interest of consumers who became a powerful and intelligent class in the society various legislations were passed to achieve this objective the concept of consumer came into existence and consumer protection became one of the primary duties of the state the subject of consumer protection has received an increased importance in india as well as in the other developing countries let us examine the position in the 20th century the united nations general assembly passed a resolution in 1985 emphasizing the need for consumer education it has laid down certain guidelines urging the government to develop and encourage the development of general consumer education and information programs bearing in mind 
the cultural tradition of the people concerned. According to these guidelines, the governments were called upon to take care of the interest of the consumers of all kinds and classes. These guidelines which were unanimously adopted by the General Assembly on 9th April 1985 are also described as the chapter of consumer rights as well as human rights. They represent an internationally recognized set of minimum objectives potentially being of particular assistance to the developing countries. These guidelines represent an initial attempt to create a global framework for consumer protection policy and measures. They acted as impetus for many legislation framed in many countries. The Consumer Protection Act 1986 was one such legislation in India. Every year, the 15th March is observed as the World Consumer Rights Day. The significance of this day is that on this day in 1962, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States of America, declared four consumer rights in his special message to the Congress, which are right to safety, right to be informed, right to be heard, right to choose. His discussion sparked a deliberation and subsequent legislation to protect consumers. Later, the International Organization of Consumers Unions, that is IOCU, added three more rights to the list. Consumers International, CI, formerly the IOCU, which is also known as the International Organization of Consumers Unions, or International Consortium of Consumer Advocacy Groups that promotes the rights and interests of consumers. It has been founded as the International Organization of Consumers Union in 1960 and by the early 21st century, it had grown to include more than 200 member organizations in more than 100 countries. It is headquartered in London. CI defends what it considered to be the eight basic consumer rights, the right to protection from unsafe products, the right to product information, the right to a range of product choices, the right to representation in government policy, the right to products that satisfy basic needs, the right to redress for grievances concerning unsatisfactory products, the right to consumer education and the right to an environment that is not threatening to human well-being. Another important name in the international sphere while discussing consumer protection is Rolf Nader. He is the author of the book Unsafe at Any Speed published in 1965 when he was a budding lawyer and this book indicates the faulty design of automobiles. The book set out to show how automakers had valued style over safety, particularly in cars like the Chevrolet Corvoy, thereby putting consumers at risk. The book led to a series of landmark laws that have prevented multiple motor vehicle accidents, thus curbing deaths and injuries. He revolutionized consumer protection in the United States of America. Now let us understand the concept of consumerism. It is the propensity to consume and keep consuming. It is the drive to buy and own more stuff and to define one's identity through what they own. Economists view consumerism as a positive for consumer spending and GDP growth. Consumerism is the idea that increasing the consumption of goods and services purchased in the market is always 
a desirable goal and that a person's well-being and happiness depend fundamentally on obtaining consumer goods and material possessions. Following the Great Depression, consumerism was largely derided. However, with the US economy kick-started by World War II and the prosperity that followed at the end of the war, the use of the term in the mid 20th century began to have a positive connotation. During this time, consumerism emphasized the benefits that capitalism had to offer in terms of improving standards of living and an economic policy that prioritized the interest of the consumers. It falls within the most scientific conceptions of contemporary social movements. It can be defined as a diverse and evolving social movement seeking to enhance the economic well-being and political power of consumers. In fact, the term consumerism and consumer movement can be used interchangeably. Consumerism denotes a common threat that runs through the consumer activism, characteristic of different times and places. Consumerism has been a movement in which the trader and the consumer find each other as adversaries. Consumerism has its own critics as well as fans. The critics of the consumerism contend that the free market enterprise system is already structured to protect the interests of the consumers automatically. Obviously, most of these critics are either businessmen or protagonists of lesser fairy system. On the other hand, consumerists take strong exception to these criticisms. They vehemently assert that the benefits generated by the policies have far outweighed the costs. They argue that the presence of consumerists is very essential in stimulating government actions in defense of health, safety and other rights of the consumers. Let us have a peek at the ancient times and the position of consumer protection therein. Laws aimed at the protection of consumers are not confined to modern times. Some prohibitions against adulterated food and false weights and measures are thousands of years old, such as those found in Old Testament, the Code of Hammurabi and the ancient laws of India. European consumer protection statutes began to appear in the 15th and 16th centuries and were based on the principle of deterrence. For instance, vendors of adulterated milk in Austria were required to drink all of their own product. Similarly, French consumers were allowed to throw rotten eggs at those who had sold them. In United States of America, the Constitution empowers the Congress to fix the standard of weights and measures and various state laws were passed to allow inspection of foods, tobacco, liquor, leather, lumber and gunpowder, etc. During most of the Middle Ages, consumers were protected to some degree by the moral strictures of the Catholic Church, self-regulations by craft guilds and consumers own knowledge of products and local sellers. The laws did not favor the consumers, but neither did they favor the seller. There was essentially no law covering consumer transaction. Gradually, the European kings oversaw a shift in legal doctrine that favored sellers in their efforts to encourage the growth of trade. The dominant rule of the marketplace became caveat emptor or buyer beware. The supply and demand conditions that underlay the doctrine of caveat emptor 
and limited government intervention on behalf of consumers changed rapidly in the later decades of the 19th century. It is the primary duty of business to satisfy consumer by providing quality goods and services at right place, right time, in right quantity at a fair price. The need for consumer protection is recognized by lawmakers in India since ancient times. It was very well realized that a consumer is prone to exploitation on the part of the providers of goods and services. Therefore, the ancient Indian law courts regulated not only social conditions but also the economic life of people by establishing human values and code of trade practices to protect the interests of buyers. Manusmruti describes the social, political and economic conditions of ancient society. Manu, the ancient lawgiver, also wrote about ethical trade practices. He described a code of conduct to traders and specified punishments to those who committed certain crimes against buyers. For example, he referred to the problem of adulteration and said, one commodity mixed with another must not be sold as pure, nor a bad one as good, nor less than the property, quantity or weight, nor anything that is at hands or that is concealed. The punishment for adulterating unadulterated commodities and for breaking gems or for improperly boring them was the least harsh. Severe punishment was also prescribed for fraud in selling seed corn. He who sells for seed corn that which is not seed corn, he who takes up seed already sown and he who destroys a boundary mark shall be punished by mutilation. Interestingly, Manu also specified the rules of competency for parties to enter into a contract. He said, a contract made by a person intoxicated or insane or grievously disordered by disease and so forth are only dependent by an infant or very aged man or by an unauthorized party is invalid. During the ancient period, the king had the power to confiscate the entire property of a trader in two instances. One, when the king had a monopoly over the exported goods and two, when the export of the goods was forbidden. There was also a mechanism to control prices and punish wrongdoers. The king fixed the rates for the purchase and sale of marketable goods. Manu said, man who behaves dishonestly to honest customers or cheats in his prices shall be fined in the first or in the middle most amercement. There was a process to inspect all weights and measures every six months and the results of these inspections were duly noted. All these measures show how effective ancient society was in regulating the many wrongs of the marketplace. These measures also show how developed the system was in identifying the market strategies of traders. Thus, Manusmruti effectively dealt with various consumer matters, many of which remain of great concern in modern legal systems. Written subsequent to Manusmruti, Kautilya Sardashastra is considered to be a treatise and a prominent source describing various theories of statecraft and the rights and duties of subjects in ancient society. Though its primary concern is with matters of practical administration, consumer protection occupies a prominent place in Ardhashastra. According to Kautilya, the trade guilds were prohibited from taking recourse to black marketing and unfair trade practice. 
severe punishments were prescribed for different types of cheating. For example, for cheating with false cowrie shells, dice, leather straps, ivory cubes or by sleight of hand, the punishment shall be cutting off of one hand or a fine. The rights of the traders were also well protected. Kautilya said, on the subject of the return of an article purchased or payment of price thereof, there was fixed rule of time after which an article could not be returned. Now, coming to the modern position in India, the Consumer Protection Act 1986 till recently and the Consumer Protection Act 2019 at present, however, are not the only laws that deal with the consumer protection and it is not the first of its kind. There are number of pre-constitutional laws and also the post-constitutional laws that aim at the protection of the consumer interests. Some of these enactments are the Sale of Goods Act 1930, the Indian Penal Code 1860, the Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1940, the Agricultural Produce Grading and Marking Act 1937, the Drugs and Magic Remedies Objectionable Advertisements Act 1954, the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act 1954, now replaced by the Food Safety and Standards Act 2006, the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act 1969, now replaced by the Competition Act 2002, the Standard of Weights and Measures Act 1976 and the Bureau of Indian Standards Act 1986. This list is only illustrative in nature. The Constitution of India, which is the fundamental law of the land, also contains a number of provisions which go a long way in protecting the rights of consumers. These provisions include Article 21, which deals with the right to life and personal liberty, Article 47, which guarantees the right to health, and Article 48A, which aims at a pollution-free environment for all the citizens. The only difference between these laws and the Consumer Protection Acts of 1986 and 2019 is that in the case of farmer, each enactment deals with a special class of consumers and that too with regard to only a particular area of consumer behavior, whereas the latter are general legislation which lay down a uniform set of laws, procedures and forums for protecting the rights of all kinds of consumers. Thus, it brings into existence a separate class of people called consumers and endeavors to protect their rights irrespective of the nature of the transaction that takes place between the consumer and the seller. The advantage of this legislation is that it provides a speedy, informal, inexpensive justice within the reach of all the consumers. We have to remember father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi who reportedly made the following observations on the importance of consumers and consumer protection. A customer is the most important visitor on our premises. He is not dependent on us we are dependent on him. He is not an interruption of, on our work, he is the purpose of it. He is not an outsider on our business, he is a part of it. We are not doing him a favor by serving him. He is doing us a favor by giving us an opportunity to do so. The above statements sum up the essence of consumer protection. So, dear candidates, I sincerely hope that you have enjoyed viewing this video lesson. We shall meet in the next lesson. Thank you very much.